All right, thank you. Topping our news in this hour, restaurants in San Diego County are celebrating a legal pause in the governor's recent shutdown order. A ruling earlier this week that allowed two strip clubs to stay open despite the governor's shutdown. The judge in that case then said Thursday that the ruling also extends to restaurants. The county and state have said they plan to file an appeal. County supervisors in San Diego plan to meet today to talk about the next steps. Now, a similar lawsuit, as you know, was filed in Kern County on behalf of 35 local restaurants. And joining us to talk about the case this morning, we'd like to welcome Art Ruiz from La Mina and Cassie Biddle from Kern County, uh, from KC Steakhouse. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. First, can you just let's go ahead and begin with this, because it, it, we, we've been talking about the latest legal action. Thomas Anton representing the local restaurant group and Cassie, he said he's hoping for a preliminary hearing on Monday. Uh, have you heard any more of that and what could it mean? You know, I haven't heard a whole lot on what exactly is is happening in the courtrooms here in Kern quite yet, but we sure are paying attention to what's happening across California, and that'll set precedent for a little bit for what's going to happen in our court case here in Kern County. Cassie, could you just explain quickly what it meant the first time it shut down and the resources that you went after to try and uh, keep open and sustain during that time and how it's changed this time around? You know, when the initial shutdown came, we were all fearful. We heard the first 14 days we needed to shut down to sl show, slow the spread, and of course we did that. So for 14 days, we shut our businesses doors. We took that burden and put it on our shoulders and we stayed home and we did that. But after that, we did the takeout and delivery, and it's been a roller coaster ever since. So it's just kind of hard to keep up with Gavin Newsom's ever-changing guidebook and, and what we're supposed to do to be able to keep paychecks in our employees' hands. Were you able to secure a PPP the first time around in order to help that out? And if you did, and what, uh, what about this time around? Yes. So uh, like many other businesses, we did receive the PPP loan, which was amazing because we did. That gave us the ability to know that we could keep employees paychecks in their hands and we didn't have to worry about where that money came from. But coming into 2021, we don't quite have that stimulus package and we don't have those options yet. But that's not what we're asking for here in current. All we want is the ability to work and be able to have, make a living and give our employees a place to go every day. We're not asking for another PPP. We just want the ability to work. Art Ruiz with La Mina, you have two different locations uh, here in, in Bakersfield. Uh, what was it like for your restaurant that first time around and your employees? How, how many did you have to furlough or help find make other arrangements? Um, the, on the first time around, we were probably looking at about pretty close to 70. You know, everything was very new to us. Nobody knew anything. Everybody was fearful. Um, so we did have to let go of at, at probably more than half our staff the first time around. And what about this time around? I know that there are many businesses in Kern County, many restaurants that are just trying to, to make it through. They are challenging what the governor has ordered right now. How much more difficult is it now? It still continues to be very difficult because of the uncertainty. Um, even when we talk about just about takeout orders, it still drops our sales significantly to where we're not able to employ as many as many of, uh, of our people that we had to uh, let go uh, from the get-go because it's just not enough sales, just do takeout only. Were you able to secure any funding the first time around to help out? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And, and again, that's really what, what helped us keep going and, and keep a lot of our employees still, uh, still employed there, making a living. When it comes to restaurants, and uh, Art, you can comment, and then Cassie, I'd like to get your thoughts as well. Uh, when it comes to having to furlough or having to put your employees on unemployment, how difficult is it to get them back once you're able to do so? It's uh, very difficult. We got long, uh, many long-term employees, and it's just difficult to lose them to uh, either other industries or just to other other restaurants. Uh, when when after a while they, they become become part of the family, so. Uh, I don't blame them. I know that they have to go do whatever they got to do to make ends meet to support their family. Uh, but it's just very difficult to lose that, that, that employee. Cassie, what about you? I mean, it, it, it's more expensive to have to train someone new than bring back one of your old employees, correct? 
Oh, yes, definitely. And at Casey's, you know, most of our, our staff have became family and been there for many years. Keisha's been there for 19 years. My cousin Brittany's going on eight years, you know, so we became a family. And even during that initial shutdown, we we still did things around the building like sanitation and and we did organizing and we fixed a few things. So we were able to keep everybody semi-employed. We did have to let go about 10% of our staff, but I'm running on a staff of only about 16. So that's a little bit different than a much, a, a lot of these bigger restaurants here in town, but we were able to stay a family and we have everybody still with us and let's hope we can continue that into 2021. But with, with the ever changing guidelines, I'm not sure how, if we or any businesses will be able to survive into 2021 with these same kind of uncertainties. You know, uh, many restaurants and owners have come out and said that they they had no choice. They had to stay open and continuing to serve p uh, patrons in in person at their facilities. Uh, what is your reaction to that uh, in the face of what the governor is asking everyone to do? I think he's backed everybody into a corner at this point. So if your business is on the brink of being lost because you can't allow people into your doors at this point, what else do you have to lose? Do everything that you can to keep your community safe. Always continue with the sanitation and and doing the best that you can to be a good steward in the business industry. But if it means losing it, then I, I understand where they're coming from and I understand where our community is coming from. The support is there. Kern County is ready to go out. They are ready to enjoy a meal with their family. And if we don't give them these places to go, they're gonna gather and they're gonna congregate within their own homes and their own backyards. And that's where we're seeing the spread of COVID-19. It's not happening in your restaurants. Mm -hmm. It's not happening in your churches. It's happening in your own backyards. So we ask as restaurateurs and people that work in this industry, please follow the same sanitation practices within your homes as we do in our businesses to keep you safe. And Cassie, I'll ask you first, and then Art, you can jump in as well. Uh, there has been talk that uh, Sheriff Donnie Youngblood said he doesn't have the manpower or anything to go around and try and enforce these governor's stay-at-home order when it comes to restaurants. Uh, have either of you either been contacted by or heard from anyone from a state agency about, about what's been going on? Uh, I, myself, we have been contacted by uh, uh, ABC, which is Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. Um, regarding the uh, saying that we needed to uh, stay closed and just stay open to take out orders only. Mm -hmm. And what was your reaction to that? Again, like I said at the beginning, that, that's that's tough to do because uh, you know we're talking about losing sales of anywhere from like seventy-five to eighty percent to just to take out orders only, mm -hmm. and, and and at a much higher uh, uh, cost as well because some of the services that offer the deliveries like Uber Eats, uh, Grubhub. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just charge it in an enormous amount out of what we would be making okay uh, just do those deliveries uh, finally and we're running short on time but Cassie if you could address this we know that uh, that Thomas uh, Anton is hoping for that hearing possibly on Monday in a court to, to start moving forward and uh, do you do you see more restaurants joining your cause already 35 correct you know, I, the, the outpouring of support from restaurants all across Kern County, from Delano to Taft to right here in Bakersfield has been huge. Thomas and his team worked very hard to get those 35, and that's kind of what the holdup was. I don't think he was expecting to have so much support in Kern County. So he got as many as he could on that lawsuit, but we're hoping that that, that the end result of this will will affect everybody. So it won't be everybody's name on it, but mm -hmm. the end result will be everybody will benefit from it. So that's what we're hoping for. Cassie Biddle, Art Ruiz, thank you both for being here this morning and best of luck as we head through the holidays. Thank you. Thank you.